And you know it's going to be an interesting day when you go to town for parts and when you come back you find this sitting in front of your shop. It's super cold and super windy. Let's see if we can get it inside. Apparently with both front tires flat, the only way it can steer is exactly opposite of the way you want to go. Howdy folks, welcome back. Today's project is this old Oliver tractor. I believe it's a 770. It actually belongs to my next door neighbor who unfortunately recently passed away. The family is trying to get things cleaned up and organized and to that end they want to get this tractor running. It's been sitting in a corn crib for around 10 years. That's the last time it was started. And they tell me that before that it ran fine. They used to use it, you know, obviously for loader work, moving snow and manure. And I guess they also ran an auger with it on the PTO. So let's get to it. Well, let's take a little tour. The loader is a John Deere or it's off of a John Deere. It's pretty crude. It's actually a trip bucket loader, so there's no cylinders for the bucket. You just have this latch mechanism and there's a control rod there. You just pull a lever and then gravity dumps the bucket for you. And then in order to reset it, you have to lower the bucket all the way down and then it'll push itself back up into the latches. I think these are single acting cylinders on the loader arms, meaning that it, put, it has hydraulic pressure up, but it's just gravity bringing it back down. There's only one hose coming out of them. Six cylinder Waukesha gas engine. And it's 12 volt, but I believe he said it's positive ground. So I think that's a 12 volt generator. And then it does have power steering, but I guess originally these had a, a generator power steering pump combination. It was like one unit and that went bad and they couldn't find another one so they just grabbed a power steering pump out of an old Dodge truck cut themselves an access hole in the side panel here and away you go. Well, it's narrow front but they switched the rims around so the offsets towards the outside makes it look kind of goofy. Sheet metal's not too bad. Imagine that's a Zenith carburetor probably where we're gonna have to go first. Uh, not sure about the fuel tank. I guess we'll get there. No battery and uh, no seat cushion. I see the mouse traps really worked out well. <laughs> These old row crop tractors never had three-point hitches so you're kind of limited on what you can do with it. It does have remote hydraulics and a PTO of course does have a suspension seat which is nice and your standard Oliver double H shift pattern actually don't know if they made any tractors that didn't have that same shift pattern oh. and then these levers here I think are for the hydraulics pretty cool pedal setup I guess we need one of those things that people use that tells them what to do. A plan, I think it's called. Sounds weird. I don't know where you guys want to start. Maybe, maybe get a battery. See if she even cranks over. It's got cables. The uh, battery tray is not looking so hot. Let me see if I can scare up a charged battery. Shouldn't be too hard. I keep them right next to the clean five gallon buckets and the full grease guns. Just want to be sure that it is actually positive ground. A good place to check is at the coil. So 
all these old Olivers and most tractors use a standard Delco ignition system and typically the coil is marked positive and negative yep that one is so that side says positive that side says negative and if you look at the harness this side goes that way towards the key switch and this side the positive side goes that way towards the distributor so it is in fact positive ground because the points in the distributor pull the coil to ground well, that one's hooked right to the frame so I guess that's a ground so that'll be our positive cable it's pretty crusty we're gonna scrape it out here this tool is like a reamer for battery terminals it's a little better and then this one here I guess goes to the starter I don't know positive ground makes my brain hurt I know I always get the people who are like, it's the same thing, just backwards. Yeah, but the backwards part really messes me up. Oh, I found this guy. Kicking around. Which I think will work. Now, gingerly. Yeah, seems happy with it. Okay. Cool. <laughs> the seat's pretty loose in the hips. All right, let's see what she does. I don't wanna go crazy with it. Got lights. Nothing. Okay. Does this have a mechanical switch for the starter? I don't think so. Yeah, we've got power at the starter. It does have an electric solenoid. So technically when I turn the key, if I can reach it, that should light up. And it does not. So something else must trigger the starter. I'm gonna figure out what it is. Just before we get too carried away, let's find out if this starter even works. It does. I'm not very happy about it, but it does. Jeepers, what's going on here? Uh-oh, are we locked up? I think so. Well, that's not good. I thought he told me it turned over. <laughs> Guess not. Well, that'll be fun. Well, folks, we're not looking too hot. These spark plugs are super crusty inside. Rust in the cylinders. This one will not come out. This one's blocked by the breather tube, which I gotta take out real quick. We'll see what happens with that one. These are 7 8 hex, which is pretty common on these old tractors. Okay, that one's going to come out. So now we've just got one fighter. Uh-oh. Who drew first blood? Uh, 
Yeah, that's not very good. Let's see if we can get this one out. Where's my extension? Man, that's kind of a gusher. I don't know about you guys, but I find that I bleed easier as I'm getting older. Is that one of the side effects of age? spray the rest of them while we're at it. This is PB Blaster, by the way. Because everybody always asks me, and I just put it in this WD-40 spray bottle because this is the only spray bottle I've ever found that actually holds up. I actually went through and bought every single spray bottle that McMaster Car sells, and none of them lasted as long as this one. spark plug off that's a that's a world of pain we don't want to enter but if this thing's locked up like I think it is we may be maybe in big trouble Not, uh, not encouraging. At least we got it out. All right, I'm gonna let that soak for a minute. I'm gonna find something to soak this up and I'll be back. We probably should have started with the dipstick. She's way, way over full. And it looks like a chocolate milkshake. So it's clear full of water. This isn't looking very good. Not very good at all. I put a breaker bar on the crankshaft pulley bolt and tried to turn it. All that did was just tighten the bolt. So we're gonna try some old school tricks. This is a piece of two and a half inch diameter, super heavy wall DOM tube. And it weighs, I don't know, probably 40 pounds or so. And we're just gonna slip that over top of the breaker bar and then we're just gonna leave it. So that's, that's just putting weight on that breaker bar. And we're just gonna let it sit there and kinda tweak that crankshaft. Step two, we're gonna use some snake oil. This is Marvel Mystery Oil. It does all kinds of amazing things. And it's the best cash I ever spent, according to Rob in Illinois. And if I can't trust a fellow Illinois resident, who can I trust? So we'll just dump a little bit of this stuff down in the cylinders. Like so. And uh, yeah, we'll come back and try it tomorrow. And then when this doesn't work, which it probably won't, we'll try something else. Good morning. It's the following day. As we suspected, the weight on the breaker bar, that did nothing. So it hasn't budged even the tiniest little bit. We need a different plan. I did take a bore scope and look down inside the spark plug holes. Number four is probably the worst one. I suspect there may have been a, a rodent involved, maybe either inside the cylinder or on top of the, the valve. Maybe the exhaust valve, because the exhaust pipe's just been that little short open thing. Could have easily had a mouse crawl in the exhaust manifold and, you know, set up shop. Anyway, 
since we're in the nice warm shop here with some facilities, we have some options as far as trying to break this thing loose. It doesn't look too hard to get the oil pan off. We could drop the oil pan, stick a bottle jack on the one of the crank throws, and put some pressure on that, try to get it to, to bar over. We could attach something to the PTO shaft, engage the clutch, and then hang you know a weight off of a long, a long lever or pry bar hooked up that way. That doesn't work real well because there's like a three to one gear reduction on the PTO so you lose some mechanical advantage. The other option that my dad suggested is to pull it or rock it with another tractor such as the 1650 and his exact words were don't be gentle so that seems like probably the easiest thing to do I think we'll get set up and try that What do you think, Pop? Well, that did nothing, and I mean nothing. They put some air in the tires. Well, that didn't work. I feel like I followed the instructions pretty closely. I definitely was not gentle with it, but it didn't even try to move. See that mark I made? It's still perfectly horizontal. Here we go. I've got my bald eagle nest ready. Of course, this drain plug's pretty well rounded off. What do you think? Water or antifreeze? Is it gonna be clear or is it gonna be green? Or is it just gonna be a milkshake? It's not gonna be black, I can tell you that. It's like water to me. Well, there's your problem. While that's draining, I'm gonna go ahead and work on getting the oil pan off. I think there's room for it to fit between these cast iron frame rails. I guess we'll find out. This is not going well, if I'm being honest. I really thought it was gonna be easy. Slap in a battery, clean the points, clean the carburetor. Donuts in the parking lot. But that is certainly not the case. So far, all efforts have failed. 
The pan's off, the oil's out. I put a bottle jack on the crankshaft. See it right there? I tried going one way and then I tried going the other way. She hasn't budged. Hey, don't just stand out here and whine. Come inside. Yeah. Are you happy now? Why don't you find the rest of those mice? Yeah, I talked to the owners. They're gonna think about it and let me know how far they wanna go with it. My best guess is that mice got into the exhaust. It's been open like this without a muffler and I caught two mice, great big mice in the traps last night and pretty sure they came in with this tractor. So if they were living inside this exhaust manifold, which, you know, with no muffler, there's nothing to stop them from getting down in there. Then, you know, who knows how many generations of mouse peas been running down into one or more of the cylinders through the open exhaust valves. So I don't think we're going to get very far without pulling the cylinder head off. But even if we do that, we may, we may find a lot of things we really don't like. So, yeah, what a bummer. That exhaust manifold is packed full. <sighs> we're not doing too good with these stuck engines. I think we're zero for three now and I don't think there's any hope for this one. There's no way it's going to break loose without taking the head off. Even if it did crack loose, we wouldn't have any compression on cylinder number four. You know, at a minimum, it's going to need a valve job. And once we get the head off, we're probably going to find out that it needs rings and possibly pistons and liners. And, you know, that's basically a complete overhaul. The problem is to do that would cost at least $3,000. I figure. And these tractors on a good day are worth maybe 2500 You can go on to an auction site like Auction Time, find completed auctions for 770 tractors that are running and driving anywhere between $1,200 and $2,500. And this one has lots of other problems. The tires are pretty much shot. The sheet metal is in pretty, pretty rough shape. It's been painted and not painted very well. It has a pretty major leak on the power steering, so the whole front end needs to be rebuilt or resealed. The TA, the, the multi-speed shifter deal, that was removed when the engine was rebuilt originally. Plus it's narrow front end, and it has that crappy loader on it, which I think actually takes away from the value. Anyway, I explained the, the situation to the owners, gave them a ballpark estimate of what I thought it might cost to, to fix this thing up, you know, a minimum to get it running and driving and they decided they don't want to go any further and I can't say that I blame them it just doesn't make economic sense to do that so yeah thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time is what I would normally say except I did the smart thing and I bought this tractor as is and we're gonna go ahead and fix it up on the YouTube channel won't make any sense financially, but it'll be kind of fun and it'll make pretty good YouTube content, I think. There we go. It's always encouraging when your tractor comes with a reserve of power steering fluid. I think she's been leaking for a while.
So I was always taught to keep the push rods in order and put them back in, back in the way they came out. So just a piece of cardboard with some slots in it. It's a pretty simple way to do that. It's actually clear full of coolant, but the block drain is plugged, I guess. Nothing's coming out. So we're going to try to blow through it. month. I think we have to take this whole oil tube and fitting assembly apart or take it off of the words Wes. Come on. So I believe the oil actually comes up through a hollow head bolt. Which is kind of an interesting way to do it. Backwards, buddy. There we go. Helps if you loosen them. That's the deal. Hollow head bolt. give us a whole lot to hold on to here. I'm thinking maybe we do something like this. And then we use these as a spacer. A couple days from now I won't be able to find my 5 8 and 11 16 socket. <laughs> I missed the money shot. The uh, the block drain must not be working. Because <laughs> as soon as I cracked that head loose, coolant went everywhere. Jeez. Alright, let me clean that up and we'll get the head off. <laughs> That's a pretty sad sight. The good news is, thanks to the Marvel Mystery Oil, it smells minty fresh. Alright, let me see if I can clean this stuff up, especially that one. And we'll reevaluate. Well, I have to say, it's really not, maybe not as bad as I thought it would be. This is cylinder number four, which was the worst one. There's a spot right there that's pitted pretty deep. And it does have a pretty good ridge worn in the liner. So she's got some hours on her. Well, what do you guys think? I've still got that evapo rust from the last engine I tried to break loose that didn't work at all. We could try it on this one and see if it doesn't work at all. I don't see what we have to lose.
uh, I wasn't really paying attention because I didn't expect that to work. Nothing else I've tried has worked, but it's broken loose. I'm sure of it. That piston's moved substantially. Yeah. So here's the setup. Last night, before I went, before I called it a day, I sucked the uh, the evapo rust out of the pistons or out of the cylinders, and I filled them up with PB blaster, a little bit of PB bla PB blaster, and then I hung that breaker bar and the heavy piece of tubing on it again. When I came in this morning, it hadn't budged. Oh, well, I also put these hold downs on for the liners because you don't want the liners to push up out of the block. Anyway, then I tried rattling on them with the air hammer and that didn't really do a whole lot other than beat up the top of the pistons. So that might not be the greatest idea. So then I went back to the jack. I've got the bottle jack there, pushing on the crankshaft through a long brass rod. And I just started hitting on the top of that piston, the one that I think is the one that was most stuck. And it moved. Now it's got the whole weight of the front of the tractor pushing up on it or down on it, depending on how you want to look at it. But yeah, it moved. So I'm going to get the jack out of there and we're going to try to to see if we can get it, you know, to free up now that it's now that it's broken loose, we need to be a little more gentle, I guess is what I'm getting at. I tried and I tried and I tried. It's just not going to work. I've been pounding on that piston off and on all day and it has moved significantly see number six is almost at top dead center but I think the problem is the the aluminum piston is swollen so much that even if we hammered it completely through a full revolution that it still wouldn't move freely and even if it did you know, we're not going to have much compression. There's so much damage on that liner. So, I think at this point, you know, we're just wasting our time. We might as well pop the bolts off the connecting rods and get the liners out and just see how she looks. I don't know. I was told these are M&W pistons. So they're aftermarket pistons that are supposed to give it a little bit higher compression. I don't know if that's true or not. They don't seem to be marked in any way. Maybe when we get them out, we can find that that information. Well, how much coolant am I going to get in my face? All of it? Probably. Good morning YouTube. Behind us is an unholy mess that is the Oliver 770 project. But instead of dealing with that, I want to show you guys a couple of little treats that came in recently. After 180 something videos and three plus years of creating them, I have finally upgraded to a quote unquote real camera. This is a Canon EOS M50. It is a mirrorless DSLR camera. It can record in 4K, although there's a crop, I guess. We're probably not going to do that, but it takes fantastic 1080p video. It comes with this 15 to 45 lens that the professionals call the kit lens. And I also have a wide angle 11 to 22 millimeter lens. So, hopefully over the uh, Christmas break here, I can figure out how to use this bad boy and we can dial back the jankiness on the YouTube channel because yeah, it's about time. 
also, even more exciting, I'm a winner. Sorry about that, I had to let the dog in. Every time I start talking to the camera, he thinks there's somebody in here that he should come and see. Anyway, I was watching a video on the channel A Few Points From Perfect, which is a spin-off of the channel Dirt Perfect in collaboration with Jason Works A Lot. And they're trying to make a podcast related to construction, earth moving, machinery, everything. Uh, community involvement, how they got into YouTube, you name it, they've got it. And they're, they're attempting to make a podcast, but they're releasing them as videos on YouTube. Anyway, I didn't actually know it at the time, but by leaving a comment on that video, I was automatically entered into a giveaway. And some kind of a, I don't know, algorithm or whatever, randomly chose me as a winner. <laughs> 4TL gear from the Mac, 11 2020 From Dirt Perfect to watch Wes work, fantastic. Yeah, so this is the one of the gears that he replaced in his Mac transmission when he rebuilt it. Very cool. Lots of Dirt Perfect stickers. That is a hoodie with the official Dirt Perfect logo. Okay, we'll put that aside for now. Thank you, Mike, I really appreciate it. It's fun to be a winner. I believe there were several other winners, but I was one of them. If you guys haven't checked out Dirt Perfect, be sure to do that. I will put a link in the description below. There's several other guys that he kind of pals around with, collaborates with, who also have YouTube channels. Captain Cleanman, uh, Aaron, the man behind the scenes. Oh man, SOT Metalworks. Who's the other ones that he's always on there with? Mr. Millennial. Anyway, I'll try to put together a, a whole list of, of different channels. Well, Jason works a lot as well. Yeah. Also, spoiler, I've been invited to be a guest on the A Few Points From Perfect podcast. We're going to try to put that together. It's a little difficult. He's about, I think, about eight hours away from me. So we're working on it. Stand by for an announcement on that. The people are very concerned about you. Why? Because you haven't been in any, vid in any videos recently. I don't go outside in the winter. Also, you went on a, a uh, solo vacation. Oh yeah, I did go on a solo vacation. I wasn't, I was with a friend. Anyway, one of those hoodies is for you. Oh good, because it's freezing in here. <laughs> yes, it's always cold. Those are nice. Yeah, they're very nice. Looking very fashionable there. Nice. It's nice and fuzzy and warm. Thank you. Let's get back to the Oliver. We're in full Bangladesh ship breaking mode here. It's a pretty much a disaster area. Last night I did get the cylinders pulled out. I haven't gone through them, you know, and taken a real close look, but it would appear that at least three out of six cylinders are seized up pretty tight. So. Yeah, we never had a chance. <laughs> I figured out why the block drain didn't work. This is the water jacket. So this whole area right here is filled with coolant and then the liner gets pressed in right here. It has a seal on the top and the bottom. So the whole outside surface of that liner is exposed to the engine coolant. But check out this sludge. That's incredible. I don't think I've ever seen a cooling system that was this sludged up. Now obviously it's the worst back here at cylinder number six, the furthest away from the, the water pump, but holy crap. So I don't know what happened. They put a bunch of stop leak in it because the liner seals were leaking or something. It's uh, 
Yeah, it's a mess. Well, this should be good. That's a lot of mouse. Looks like all of the exhaust valves are stuck. 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 No. Stuck down. Stuck. That one's good, but that's not an exhaust valve. Stuck. Stuck. I don't record everything I do. Oh man. <laughs> that, that, that was good footage right there. You would have caught it. Uh, life lesson for anybody watching, do not take apart valve springs over top of a floor drain. We'll leave it at that. I just hate rodents so much. The good news is I think the head and the valves are salvageable. Obviously we're going to have to do quite a bit of grinding on these exhaust valve seats, but I think they'll come around and the, the guides are tight. The valves themselves, you know, there's plenty of meat there to grind and the stems have hardly any wear, so shouldn't be a problem. There's more good news on the bottom end. The rod and main bearings look like they're in really good shape and I think the crank's been ground once before. If you can read that part number, if it would focus. The last digit is a 10, so I believe these are 10 under rod bearings. We've got to do something about this. So I'm going to try a little trick called the V-Core Shovel. See if we can get it to work. Huh. Alright, one more try. Let's try it on the toolbox. It's not really clean, but at this point, I'll take it. All right, folks, I think that's about as far as we can go with the Oliver 770 project for now. We're gonna have to have some parts. I thought initially we might be able to do kind of a musty one, Diesel Creek style, pound out the stuck piston, free up the rings, copper coat the head gasket, slap it back together and make it run kind of a deal, but it, it just isn't gonna work out that way. Even if we could get the engine to turn over, there's no way it would make any compression. There's too much damage to the exhaust valve seats, thanks to our friends here. I also don't think we would ever get cylinder number four to come around and make compression. There's too much damage to that piston and liner. So at a minimum, we need a valve job and we need one piston and liner. The problem I ran into is that this engine has a three and nine sixteenths bore diameter. And the only replacement parts that are available are three and five eighths bore diameter which means we're gonna to have to replace all six pistons and liners. You can't mix and match piston diameters unless you wanna have a three and a half liter hand grenade. The good news is that those parts are readily available and the bottom end of the engine looks fine. We don't have to replace the rods and mains. We can put that stuff back together just like it was. The bad news is it's gonna cost me about $800 for those parts. And we're going to have to have some other parts to make the thing actually run, like spark plugs, probably points and condenser, and maybe some parts for the carburetor. So I wouldn't be surprised if we're into this tractor for $900 to $1,000. And I wouldn't be surprised if we never get that money back ever. Like I said before, this is a, a kind of a poor investment. These tractors really don't have a whole lot of value. But I kind of have a a soft spot for these old Oliver tractors. I don't know why they're not that good. I just kind of like them and I want to fix it. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to order the parts. I still have that Oliver OC46 crawler here. I want to get that done and send that home. Plus I have all my other customer work. So it may be a little while before we circle back to this, this tractor, but we are going to do an in-frame overhaul on it. We haven't done an overhaul, an engine overhaul video for I don't know, several years, I think. So it should make good content for the, the channel. In the meantime, it's gonna have to sit outside 
I went ahead and sprayed all the exposed surfaces down with fluid film and covered up the engine. It's winter time, there's low moisture content in the air. It shouldn't hurt anything for it to sit outside. Yeah, I think that pretty well covers it. Thanks guys for watching. I imagine this is going to be a pretty long video and it definitely did not go in the direction that I expected, but that's reality, I guess. So thanks for hanging out with me. Have a Merry Christmas and I'll see you next time.